Okay, tell us about this experiment. For this part of pulsed NMR, we're going to be doing a two pulse sequence in order to determine the spin spin relaxation time. Mm, exciting. The first pulse, pulse A, um, is a 90 degree pulse, which in this case is set to 2.6 microseconds. The second pulse, pulse B, is a 180 degree pulse, which here we've set to 5.2 microseconds. So why did you pick those times? Through experimental determination, we found that the 180 degree pulse, which should correspond to no signal um, being shown uh, on the oscilloscope, was 5.2, and then we halved that to get the 2.6 microsecond pi on 2 pulse. Are these uh, sample dependent? They are sample dependent and they are also dependent on the, the field um, and a few other minor factors which tweak them, maybe 10-20%, uh, but they're always around 2.5 and, and 5 microseconds for this light oil sample. Okay. So once we turn on the second pulse, we will see a spin echo and the experiment will be to vary the time distance between the first pulse, pulse A, and the second pulse, pulse B. Um, and this will result in echo at two times the, the spacing between those pulses. So as we increase the time space between those pulses, we see the echo here on the oscilloscope moving to the right, increasing in time, and also decreasing in amplitude. So why does it decrease in amplitude? The amplitude decrease is actually characteristic of the of the spin-spin relaxation. That's what we're measuring. So it's a stochastic process which is non-conservative over time. And so we measure the amplitude as a function of the space between the pulses and normalize by the amplitude of the initial pulse to determine the spin-spin relaxation time. I'm going to stop it there, just so All right, when you're ready. Now we can perform a measurement of the spin-spin relaxation time in a single shot by performing a sequence of pulses one after the other. So once again, we've got the same uh, 90 degree followed by 180 degree pulse, but now we sequentially add in further 180 degree pulses after the initial one. And we can acquire all of the data in one step. So here we've got 20 pulses after the initial pulse, each separated by five milliseconds. And then we simply determine the amplitude of each of the peaks and plot that here, fit an exponential and we find that in this case our T2 time, the spin-spin relaxation time, is approximately 53 milliseconds. However, there is a flaw with this method in that if there is any slight discrepancy between the actual uh, 90 degree time and 180 degree time, we will accumulate those errors and they can add up to quite a lot. In that case we would perform a slightly more sophisticated sequence called the CPMG sequence which we can acquire the data for now. It's very similar but there are slight differences and we see that our T2 time has shifted slightly. All right, nice.